Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Jacob. Hey, it's day two of our food unit, and actually, this is kind of a a subsection of food called drugs. <laughs> Substance. Yeah, this is actually <laughs> a drug, a chemical that we're talking about, caffeine. Right. That's、uh, added to some foods, and then in some foods, it occurs naturally. For example, coffee and tea.、Uh, the plants have this. Particular drug in them, so it's natural. But as we、uh, talked about in day one, people are starting to add it to things that didn't have caffeine before, like、mm. gummy candies. But I have seen them here, and I think, oh, don't put caffeine in those. Yeah. Then parents are going to have to, you know. Be watching everything their kids eat all the time. Yeah, it's kind of hard.、Uh, if kids get too much caffeine in them, that is not going to be good for anybody.、Hmm. No, it certainly won't be. Okay, well, before we get into explaining day two of our article,、uh, let's listen to the article. People love and rely on caffeine for its perceived benefits to their attention and alertness. But does it help people in other ways? A group of researchers published a study in Nature Neuroscience in 2014 that found that caffeine enhanced long-term memory. Furthermore, as previously discussed, caffeine can lead to an increase in dopamine. So it's not too surprising that a 2015 review of caffeine and depression-related studies found that caffeine consumers. We're at a lower risk of depression. On the physical side, caffeine seems to have a few different effects. It might improve muscle contractions and increase people's ability to tolerate fatigue. Similarly, it might reduce the level of exhaustion people perceive in themselves as they exercise. This makes workouts feel easier, thereby removing a common obstacle to regular exercise. Some studies also show that drinking two to four cups of coffee or green tea each day can lower the risk of strokes by between 14 and 20 percent. And while caffeine may raise some people's blood pressure slightly, this effect declines with regular consumption. Enjoying coffee daily, in fact, turns out to reduce the risk of heart disease by 16 to 18 percent. However, Caffeine has side effects and drawbacks too, especially in relation to its ability to keep people awake and alert. It can be hard to properly relax once too much caffeine has been consumed, and for people who are prone to anxiety, caffeine can make this problem worse. The effects of caffeine vary greatly from person to person, but by staying well under 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. You can enjoy its benefits while avoiding its downsides. Okay, guys, let's get started. Is caffeine helpful or harmful? We're going to continue talking about some of the effects of caffeine. It says here that people love and rely on caffeine for its perceived benefits to their attention and alertness. Perceived—that's a great word. To perceive something means to understand or think of something in a particular way. It's how you view something.、Mm -hmm. Couldn't it doesn't necessarily necessarily mean it's a fact.、Um, people perceive things differently. That's their kind of their viewpoint of something, how they see things, and it can always be different based on someone's background. Their education,、uh, their family, things can change based on someone's background and what kind of、uh, situation they're seeing things in. Right, but maybe as you as you learn things, like first you will perceive something, right?、Mm -hmm. But then as you examine it a little bit more closely, or you kind of get to the bottom of it and you have more knowledge about it, maybe like the perception, something that you you think of beforehand, and then your actual experience or your actual knowledge,、uh, these are kind of two different things. Yeah, it'll so, change how you perceive things. Right.、Um, okay. So the perceived benefits, the benefits, the good things that we think. 
think、uh, caffeine has or caffeine provides to us.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, it has benefits to their attention and alertness.、Uh, but does it help people in other ways? Okay, right. As we start to research. Chemicals and and things more. We kind of learn about learn more about them, and we we learn if they help us in other ways. So a group of researchers published a study. Okay, so scientists are working together. They're researching caffeine. They published a study in Nature Neuroscience. Okay,、mm -hmm. this is the name of a magazine. Now, when it's kind of a magazine that has scientific articles in it, we sometimes call it a journal, which is J O U R N A L, an academic journal.、Mm -hmm. And that's when researchers, scientists, people like that will publish papers、uh, for other, usually for other <laughs> researchers and other、uh, doctors and scientists to read. Okay, so they they published a journal.、Oh, excuse me, they published an article in 2014, and that. Found that caffeine enhanced long-term memory. Okay, so when something enhances another thing, it basically、uh, improves it. It benefits it.、Uh, when you see the word enhance, a lot of times I think of sports.、Uh, people that play sports take drugs. They take PEDs. Okay, now PED stands for performance. Enhancing drug. It's a drug you take that basically makes you a better player. It gives you more muscle. It makes you faster.、Uh, a PED, if you get hurt, will also help you recover more quickly. So a lot of sports leagues, what they're trying to do is cut down on or eliminate. Athletes taking PEDs, these performance-enhancing drugs, because you want everyone to be able to perform at an equal level, right? Or just based on their ability. If you take a drug that makes you better, of course, it's not really fair to the other players. Okay, so to enhance something basically means to improve it, to give it certain benefits, things like that. Yeah, I could say I went out and bought some new plants. To put in my apartment, I thought it would enhance,、um, enhance the you know the furnishings, the decor in my apartment.、Mm -hmm. I just think it looks better with plants. So you can do a lot of things to enhance your appearance. Maybe you want to go and get a new haircut. Oh, that's good. You know,、yeah. or maybe、uh, start taking up some、uh, exercise that you haven't done in the past because it'll make you、uh, a little bit more fit. It will enhance your appearance,、mm. and it also will enhance. Your、um, your moods. I think exercise helps you feel better and happier. So here、uh, we found out that it can enhance long term memory, help your long term memory. Furthermore, as previously discussed in、uh, day one, that is, caffeine can lead to an increase in dopamine.、Uh, dopamine is that、uh, particular. Um, chemical that is released in your brain that makes you feel good.、Mm. We all want to feel happy and good. Yeah,、uh, that's why some people go and exercise. They、uh, they get more dopamine that's released when they、uh, go out and exercise. So, yeah, there's some good things along with that. So it's not too surprising that when they did a 2015 review of caffeine related studies and depression related studies, they found that caffeine consumers, people that consume Consume or take in caffeine, we're at a lower risk of depression. So yeah,、uh, that's always a good thing. Nobody wants to feel down and blue and depressed. Right. That's what depression is. Depression is. I think depression is actually a medical term、mm -hmm. for this kind of、uh, severe sadness or the feeling of maybe you can't really function or it's really difficult for you. Depression. We we. Think of it as sort of a mental illness, right? People have have physical illnesses, and but then there's also these mental illnesses that,、mm -hmm. uh, if you're just sick and you you actually need treatment. So sometimes we say, "Oh, I'm really depressed," and we we mean that to say we're really sad. Yeah, but, we're down. But yeah, but these days when people talk about depression, they might actually be be thinking of a, a I guess a medical condition. Yeah, we say they they have clinical depression, right? Which means it's been.、Um, Prescribed by well, it's been diagnosed by a doctor.、Mm. Um, that's a lot different, guys, than being sad for a week or two or even a month. Yeah, so it's yeah. something that you need to see a doctor about, and maybe even have, have some, some sort of、uh, yeah treatment, yeah. Yeah. maybe medication or or therapy and things like that to try、mm. and get over your depression. Yeah, to deal with it, it's hard. Okay. So yeah,、um, so they found that、uh, people who do consume 
of caffeine were at a lower risk of depression. Doesn't mean they didn't get depressed; they were just at a lower risk. So, on the physical side, caffeine seems to have a few different effects. It might improve muscle contractions and increase people's ability to tolerate fatigue. I know that caffeine is added to headache medicine. If you have migraines, I have migraines, which、mm-hmm. is a bad kind of headache, where your blood vessels will just close, and I suddenly can't see.、Oh. Tom gets them too.、Um, I suddenly start seeing flashes. I can't read. It's、uh, yeah. kind of scary. But the caffeine helped、uh, the migraine, so that's why they started putting in、uh, headache medicine,、okay. aspirin. But I also realized I was getting addicted to caffeine too, so I had to figure out a way to to reach a balance there. But yeah, sometimes、um, it can help with contractions, muscle contractions. Think of those times sometimes、uh, when you're asleep and suddenly your leg. A、uh, leg would start cramping. Oh, that's, that's a contraction. The worst. Yeah, that hurts. It does. Yeah, and you have to stand up and kind of, you know, hop on your leg to get it to stop. It's or- oh, it's horrible. Or when a, a woman has a baby,、mm-hmm. she has、uh, labor contractions that push that baby out.、Mm-hmm. Those are contractions. So it might improve muscle contractions and also increase people's ability to tolerate fatigue. What's fatigue? Fatigue is just a feeling of tiredness. Uh, usually, it results from just low energy. So,、mm. like if you if you can't get going and you're just you're tired, and it could be physical. You、mm-hmm. could be physically tired. You could、mm-hmm. have this fatigue. You we often talk about mental fatigue、mm. too, right? When your your brain is just、uh, totally. and you just want to sit there and not do anything. Right.、Um, oftentimes, I think that sometimes the heat. Mm. Uh, gives me more、uh, like an added feeling of fatigue, just the because humidity too. the, you know, the、no. heat and the humidity <laughs> just saps all your energy and makes、mm. you really tired. So you can say that、uh, you have fatigue, more fatigue when the weather is so hot and humid.、Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so right, so the caffeine might help. Us be able to tolerate this fatigue, and similarly, it might reduce the level of exhaustion people perceive in themselves as they exercise. So, if we have a little bit of caffeine, then yeah, maybe we won't feel tired so easily, or this level of exhaustion. Ex- exhaustion, like fatigue, is also the feeling of being very, very tired. Like you have absolutely no energy; you can't do anything. You are exhausted. Yeah, there's no energy left. Well, someone who always has energy is our Chinese teacher. We're going to listen for a few minutes, and then we'll be back. Hello, everyone. 我是派老师。今天讲解的是十一月三号 Unit Two Caffeine Helpful or Harmful 第二天的课程。这个单元主题是咖啡因。前一天课程介绍含咖啡因的饮料受到大众欢迎，许多厂商把自己公司的产品呢包装成提升活力的能量饮。也解释了为什么咖啡因能够让人感到提神，而今天的课程更深入带着读者看看咖啡因对人体身心健康的利弊。好，我们现在一起来看学习重点，请看到第一段第一个句子，请同学特别先注意 perceived benefits。perceive 这个动词 ，perceive 是什么意思呢？其实啊，在这里就是把什么视为，把什么当做的意思。好。那要请同学特别注意的是，在这里如果我们说 perceived benefits， 其实呢，它是过去分词做形容词用。那所谓的 perceived benefits 就是认定的好处。那请同学要做区别哦。有一些时候我们在看待事物的时候，我们会有自己的看法，和实际的情况是有一些差距的，所以我们会有所谓的。Perceived benefits and actual benefits, 这样子的差别。那所谓的 perceived 就是认定的，我们认定的。那 actual 呢，这是实际的情况。再来，老师要请同学看看第一段。这里呢，可以找出咖啡因对人体有哪些好处吗？好，在这里呢，我们可以看得到第二个好处。第二个好处是什么？就在第三句这里。Caffeine enhanced long-term memory. 咖啡因是可以提升长期记忆力的。再来，只有这个好处吗？还可以看到第四句 
。第四句，咖啡因还有一个好处 ，caffeine consumers were at lower risk of depression。是什么意思啊？就是如果呢，你平常有摄取咖啡因的话，就比较不容易得到忧郁症，也就是说，可以降低忧郁症风险。Why caffeine can lead to an increase in dopamine？ 主要是因为多巴胺的分泌会增加。再来，请同学看到第二段。以上呢，在第一段的部分，我们都可以视为是 caffeine's influences on our mental performance， 因为跟 mind 精神、心理、心智有关。而下面呢，则开始介绍对于生理这方面有哪些影响。请看到第二个句子。It might improve muscle contractions and increase people's ability to tolerate fatigue. 这句话的意思是说，咖啡因可以增进肌肉收缩，并且呢，提高我们疲劳的耐受度 ，tolerate fatigue。再来，请同学看到第三个句子，这里呢，进一步的就解释喽。It might reduce the level of exhaustion. 因为我们在运动的时候呢，其实是容易觉得累的。可是如果摄取咖啡因，就比较没那么累了。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about caffeine. Is it helpful or harmful?、Mm. And、uh, we, when we left you, we were talking about how people can、uh, love and rely on caffeine because they perceive it as having benefits to their、um, attention and alertness.、Um, but does it help people in other ways? Well, we found out that through some studies, some scientists believe that it can enhance long-term memory,、okay. help improve your long-term memory. They also found out that it can increase that dopamine that makes us feel good, and so that that people who consume caffeine regularly were at a lower risk of depression. Now, when we left you, we were talking about more about this fatigue、yeah. and being exhausted,、um, which hits everybody at some point.、Uh, maybe you've been working too hard or studying too hard. It can be physically、um, tiring. To do,、uh, you know, just regular everyday work, but it can be mentally draining and tiring too.、Mm -hmm. So fatigue and exhaustion would apply to both mentally being tired and physically being tired. Right, and when you think about it, before you exercise, before you. Uh, go for your workout.、Mm -hmm. You want to eat a little bit of food, right? You might、mm -hmm. want to eat a little bit just to give your body some some fuel.、Mm -hmm. And you might be able to think of caffeine in a similar way. That if you have a little bit of caffeine in your system,、uh, maybe that will actually help your workout a little bit. So let's continue. It says this makes workouts feel easier. Okay, so having a little bit of caffeine will enable us to、uh, work out. Okay, so workout one word is the Actual、uh, physical exercise, right? Oh, so I went for a workout、mm -hmm. the, this morning.、Uh, when you put it in two words, if you separate it, work out, that would be the verb phrase. So I worked out、uh, at nine o'clock this morning. So、mm -hmm. work out, noun, one word. Work out,、uh, two words. That would be the verb phrase. So this makes workouts feel easier, thereby removing a common obstacle to regular exercise. Right. So if you have a little bit of caffeine, then yeah, maybe. Uh, you'll have that little extra kick in your brain that will say, "Okay, let's go. We can do this. We can we can work out and we can get exercise and get healthy." So yeah, it might be something to consider. <laughs> yeah, I think I would need that.、Uh, sometimes I get tired going to work out. So some studies also show that drinking two to four cups of coffee or Green tea, you can drink either one each、mm. day, can lower the risk of strokes. Now, a stroke is a medical condition, and if someone has a stroke, there's an artery in their brain that suddenly bursts, or、um, it can also become blocked,、okay. so that they may die. Um, my grandfather died of a stroke. They're very common, and it was very sudden. They have different levels, right? You can experience just a very slight stroke. My mom had a very small stroke、okay. about 
ten years before she passed away, and、um, she suddenly couldn't talk. It did.、Yeah. My sisters were looking at her, going, "What? What language is she speaking?"、Right. And we realized then she'd had a we call them mini strokes. Okay. So yeah, you can pass away from a stroke,、mm-hmm. or、um, it can lead to.、Um, Just a big disability. Sometimes people can no longer move parts of their bodies,、right. based on that. Because what it does is affects your muscles. So yeah, so there is、uh, some research that shows that if you drink、uh, two to four cups of coffee or green tea each day, it can lower that risk of having a stroke, and you don't want to have a stroke.、Uh, that's one good reason to exercise. <laughs> True, <laughs> but that sounds like a lot to me. Two、yeah. to four cups. I mean, if you tell me you're drinking four cups of coffee a day, I might think that's a lot. That, yeah. yeah, you might want to cut down a little bit. But、mm. as we said in in the Previous day, people get addicted to the caffeine, right? So、mm-hmm. they have one cup, and then they kind of feel their energy going down. And so, oh, then okay, I got to have another cup, and、right. then another cup, and so it can kind of be a little bit risky, you know,、mm-hmm. consuming so much caffeine, even though. Uh, studies are showing us that maybe they will help reduce the risks of some things like strokes and、uh, depression, and they also helps our long-term memory. I think it's important to remember, though, too, that science changes. True.、Uh, things we were told growing up are no longer true.、Uh, yeah, that's we a good grew、point. up、uh, believing butter was bad for you, and that margarine was the only thing to eat, and now it's just the opposite.、Okay. So,、uh, be careful. I think you should check into things.、Uh, the scientists. Are wrong much of the time and right some of the time. Look at your own body and see how your body reacts to things, and I think that's a good way to go too. If you don't do well on two cups of coffee, maybe you should cut back.、Mm. You know, so just、um, be aware of what your body's trying to tell you, because I think our bodies are pretty smart, and we're all different. So while ca- caffeine may raise Uh, some blood pressure、uh, slightly. That's not a good thing. That leads to strokes, as we know. This effect declines or goes down with regular consumption. So I guess as your body gets used to that caffeine, it handles it better. Okay. Consumption is a word we use、uh, to talk about consuming something. Consume is the verb. So you can consume time, energy, goods, food.、Um, our cars consume. Fuel. We consume electricity in our homes,、mm-hmm. so consumption is just that noun that describes、uh, that use of different things. So, yeah, if you consume、uh, caffeine regularly, your body probably gets a chance to just get used to it, and your blood pressure won't go up so much. Right. So, enjoying coffee daily, in fact, turns out to reduce the risk of heart disease. By sixteen to eighteen percent. Okay, so consuming caffeine, coffee, green tea, and maybe you know not a lot of sugar or milk. Just try to drink it, drink it black, or just drink it without any、uh, sugar and stuff.、Uh, can actually be good. These are some of the benefits. But, however, caffeine has side effects and drawbacks too. Okay, now a drawback. Okay, this is. Sort of the the opposite of a benefit would be a drawback. A drawback is a negative aspect of something,、mm-hmm. a, a downside of something. Okay, so what are some of the drawbacks of caffeine? Well, especially in relation to its ability to keep people awake or alert. Okay, so yeah. Caffeine has the benefit of being able to wake us up, to give us some pep, to give us some kick.、Mm-hmm. But how about in relation to its ability to keep people awake or alert? Okay, so maybe it does this a little bit, a little bit too much. Let's say, right? That's one of the things that we want to have a little caffeine to. To pick us up, but one of the drawbacks, one of the disadvantages, is in relation to its ability to keep us awake. It might wake us up a little bit too much, or it might make us a little too alert. Let's say. Oh, so you never get the rest you need because our bodies need to sleep. Yeah. Um, I wanted to mention here, in relation to, can be substituted with one word. Concerning, okay. So especially concerning its ability. So just be aware that those are two synonyms that you can interchange. And as、uh, Jacob said, drawback is also a disadvantage to something. Maybe、uh, you have a great plan or、uh, great vacation plans, but there's some sort of drawback disadvantage. I could say Taiwan or Taipei. It's a great city.、Uh, I think it's only dr- 
drawback to me is the weather in the summer. <laughs> it's, it's pretty hot in the summer. It's that, hot this and is humid. true. Yeah. Yeah. But、uh, other than that, I pretty much love、uh, living here. But yeah, in the summer it gets a little hot and humid for me. <laughs> so yeah, it can be hard to properly relax if you've had too much caffeine, if you've been consuming too much. So for people who are prone. If you're prone to do something, you're likely to do it, or you're likely to suffer from something. So, if you're prone to anxiety, you get anxious very easily.、Mm-hmm. Ooh, caffeine can make that worse. So, again, consider your own health, your own body, and how it reacts to certain drugs and foods, and then make your choices from that. But here's some advice: by staying well under 400 milligrams of caffeine a day. You can enjoy its benefits while avoiding the downsides. Yeah, if you can get the benefits without getting the drawbacks, that's the best way to kind of balance how、mm. much caffeine you put in your body. Sounds good.、Hmm. Okay, well that's it for today, guys. We're gonna listen to our Chinese teacher one more time, and then we'll be back to say goodbye. 再来，一样在第二段，请同学看第四句有个 thereby， 在这里呢，可以就把它看作就是所以。Therefore 的意思。再来，请同学再找找看，对于我们的生理来说，咖啡因还有什么样子的好处呢？可以看到第二段第五句，这里讲到了。Okay, drinking two or four cups of coffee each day can lower the risk of strokes. 所以喝咖啡因，那可能呢就比较不容易中风。再来，请同学看到同样第二段的第七个句子，这是在生理方面，咖啡因还有另外一个好处。Enjoying coffee daily, in fact, turns out to reduce the risk of heart disease. 所以，如果我们每天喝点咖啡，其实是有助于降低心脏病风险的。再来，请看到第三段，请同学看第一个句子。好 ，caffeine has side effects and drawbacks. 这里 side effect 就是副作用 ，drawbacks 就是缺点。再来，请同学看看第二个句子，这里告诉我们喽，咖啡因不全然都是只有好处的。对有一些人来说，其实咖啡因可能会造成他们本来就不太好的状况会更恶化。像什么样子的人呢 ？For people who are prone to anxiety. Be prone to 就是特别容易受到什么问题的影响。好，所以有些人呢，他特别容易焦虑，那喝了咖啡因就更难放松了。好，那再来，请看第三句文章给我们建议，建议什么呢？其实啊，每一个人受到咖啡因的影响都不太一样。不过，如果一天摄取量控制在四百毫克 ，you can enjoy its benefits。While avoiding its downsides, 后面呢就是告诉我们可以蒙其利而不受其害。好，以上是我们针对咖啡因课文第二天的中文讲解。谢谢大家。That's it, guys. Thanks so much for joining us in English Digest. We hope you'll come back for our next program. Remember. Don't be taking in too much caffeine, <laughs> or you won't enjoy it as much. That's it.、Um, thanks for joining us, as I said, and we hope that you learned quite a bit about caffeine and maybe it changed your perception. Hmm.、Uh, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Jacob. See you next time. Bye.